Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to configure AdGuard Home on Open Media Vault. AdGuard Home is a DNS ad blocker. The best comparison to it would be Pihole. So Pihole and AdGuard Home are both DNS ad blockers. The thing about AdGuard Home is it's a little easier to maintain, meaning when you just set it up, it kind of blocks all of the ads that you'd expect, whereas Pihole, you have to configure it a little more. If you're interested in that type of experience, meaning you have to configure it more, I just created a tutorial on how you can configure Pihole on Open Media Vault, but today we're going to look at how to set up AdGuard Home on Open Media Vault. So before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything we're going to be doing today in the description of the video. So I already have Docker and Portainer installed on my Open Media Vault, but if you don't, in the written instructions, I have steps on how you could set that up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a Mac VLAN network interface. Now, I got a few questions in a recent video when we set up Pihole on Open Media Vault asking why we were using a Mac VLAN network interface. So the reason why we're using a Mac VLAN network interface is because it avoids any port conflicts that might occur. So a port conflict is when your Docker container tries to use the same port as the Open Media Vault uh, is already using. So for example, by default, Open Media Vault uses port 80 for its web interface. Pihole and Adguard Home both use port 80 as well. So if you try and set that up, you're never going to be able to get to the web interface because port 80 is already being used. So a Mac VLAN network interface, what it does is it allows you to have your own port configuration with its own IP address. It's a virtual network interface. So basically we're setting that up so that we don't run into any of those port conflicts and we will access our AdGuard home instance from a different IP address. So you're first going to SSH into your Open Media Vault server and then you're going to type in ifconfig. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see all of your network interfaces. So what you're looking for is the IP address of your Open Media Vault server. So I have Open Media Vault running on a Raspberry Pi, but if you have it set up on Linux, the steps will be the same. So you're looking for the name of that network interface. So mine is ENXB and then a few other letters. Uh, what you need to do is you need to copy that network interface name and you need to add it to the next command. And the command that we're going to run is going to create our Mac VLAN network interface. Now you have to substitute a few things into this. You have to first make sure that the parent is equal to that network interface that you just copied, that network interface name. Next would be the subnet, gateway, and IP range. So for the subnet, gateway, and IP range, you have to match your local subnet. So for me, it's 192.168.1. For you, it could be 192.168.0 or 10.5, et cetera. Whatever you set up, you have to ensure that they match here. And the IP range, what you specify here, that's going to be the IP address of your future AdGuard home server. So make sure you're using something that's not currently configured. Finally, the AG underscore network, that's just going to be the name of this Mac VLAN network interface. Once that's done, open up Portainer and then select volumes. We're then going to create two volumes. We're going to create one called AG-conf and one called AG-work. We're going to map these to our Docker container a little later. So after that, you can go to containers and then you can select add container. You're then going to give it the name, AdGuard Home, and the image, make sure you put AdGuard slash AdGuard Home. We then have to publish nine different ports, and the first three of them are going to be UDP ports. So by default, it will be set up as TCP. Make sure you pick UDP, but we're going to be doing 53, 67, 68. Those are all UDP. Then you're going to do 53, 68, 80, 443, 853, and 3000. Those will all be TCP. Once you do that, you can go over to volumes and you're going to select map additional volume twice. We're going to map the location opt-adguardhome-conf to the ag-conf volume that we created. And then you're going to map a second container path opt slash adguardhome slash work to the volume ag-work. In the network tab, select the Mac VLAN network that we created a little earlier. And then you can go over to the restart policy and change that to always. This is just going to force AdGuard Home to always start as soon as Docker starts up. After that, you can navigate to the Mac VLAN IP address that you set up. For me, it's 192.168.1.194 and port 3000. Port 3000 will only be used for the AdGuard Home setup. When you're brought to the main page, you can select Get Started, and then you're going to change the listen interface to ETH0, 
and that will be the uh, Mac VLAN IP address that you specified. And you're gonna do the same for DNS server. Now, if you get an error stating that AdGuard Home can't configure uh, the static IP address automatically, the reason is because we specified in that Mac VLAN network interface creation command the exact IP address that we wanna use. So that shouldn't change. After that, you can create a username and a password, and then you're gonna get brought to AdGuard Home, and it's gonna show you how to configure your uh, devices to use this DNS server. So it's very important to note that AdGuard Home, while it's set up, you have to ensure that all of your devices are using this DNS server so that it can filter your traffic. If you don't have this set up, AdGuard Home is not going to work. So for me, the thing that I like to do is I like to go through and change my router so that it uses my AdGuard Home server as the DNS server. The one thing that I want to note with that is you want to make sure that you have a redundant DNS server. Most routers have a primary and a secondary DNS server. Make sure you have redundant DNS servers. If you don't and you want to set up a second instance of AdGuard Home, it's very easy to set up on a cheap Raspberry Pi. I will leave a link for one in the description. You don't need anything more than a Raspberry Pi 0W. They're like 15, 20 bucks, so you know, not anything expensive. It just allows you to ensure that your DNS services stay up if you reboot your Open Media Vault server. If you aren't interested in changing your router, what you have to do is you have to change this on each device. So it will show you for Windows, Mac, Android, etc. It will show you how you can change the, uh, the DNS server on those devices. After you make the changes to those devices, you should see that this DNS server is now being used and it's filtering traffic. So moving forward, if you want to get to the AdGuard Home uh, web interface, you have to ensure that you're using port 80. So port 3000 is only used for the initial setup. After that, it will always be port 80. So that's how you set up and configure AdGuard Home. Now, one of the reasons why I like AdGuard Home over Pi-hole, and I mentioned this a little earlier, is that there's really no configuration. So when you finally set up Pi-hole, you're really not fully set up, meaning you have to go through and you have to find different block lists that you want to subscribe to, and you need to kind of configure it so that it blocks what you're looking to block. AdGuard Home is not necessarily like that, meaning that when you finally set it up and you get to the stage that we're at now, it actually blocks like 90% of what I was blocking with uh, other block lists on Pi-hole. So I went through and I configured Pi-hole pretty in depth and I just set up AdGuard Home and everything kind of just works. Now that's kind of me just, you know, using my system on a day-to-day -day basis and not noticing any of the differences. I am sure that there are differences, meaning that I'm probably blocking more with Pi-hole because I just went through and I subscribed to a bunch of block lists. But the real praise to AdGuard Home is that I can configure it, I can set it as my DNS server, and I don't really notice a difference on a day-to-day -day basis between that and Pi-hole. So that's a pretty big testament to AdGuard Home, just to kind of show you that setting it up initially might be all that you need to do. Now, it also has a bunch of other features. You can go through and you can configure that. But today, we were just looking at how to set it up. So hopefully, this all made sense. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video and it helped you out, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. It really helps me out and it helps the channel grow. So thanks a lot for watching, guys.